that there's this rock that has always been there. It's immovable. And as I was a youngster canoeing on this river, I was talking to a man who was well into his 90s saying, you know when I was young like you, I used to canoe that river. And he knew exactly the rock that I was referring to. He was, you understand what the rock is. It's immovable. It's always there. What is always there for you? And so as I think about that original couple where they had everything and then lost everything, including their marriage, yeah, they had everything that the world wants. And that's why I mention this story, because as I look at the world, you know, people, that's what they hunger. That's what they seek after. They think this is the good life, is to have the home, all the vehicles, having the trips. And that's where most people are at. That's the life that they want. It's just what Jesus is describing, this big, fancy house on the sand. And it's really hard to convince people otherwise. And to say, no, you build your life on the foundation of our Lord Jesus Christ, even if you don't have the big home and all the fancy vehicles and all this and that, you know, your life is going to be good. It's going to be blessed by God in ways that this world can never give to you. But to convince people of that, and here again in pre-marriage counseling, you know, I talk to couples, and, and a lot of times that's what the talk is. Oh, yeah, we're getting married, and marriage is going to be a good life. You know, we're going to have the big home. We're going to have all the vehicles, all of the, all the re recreational stuff. We're going to be taking all the big fancy trips. And in many ways, I just say, well, wouldn't that be nice, you know? Wouldn't that be nice? But first of all, you need to put, you need to ground your marriage and to build your lives on the foundation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do that, then you'll be good to go. I'm going to read from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through, 1 through 5. The Apostle Paul writes, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also rejoice in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. We have access to God. God has given to us salvation. Heaven's door is open to us. God promises to lead us and to be with us always. But he says that in this life, we're going to have to suffer various trials. But in our relationship with God, is that what he provides for us in our sufferings is perseverance or endurance. Now here again, if you've got endurance, you're going to be able to get through an awful lot of tough stuff. If you don't have endurance, you're not going to be able to last very long. But it, it's God's endurance. It's not your own endurance. You know, I've been a marathon runner for many years, and marathon running is you run 26.2 miles. And so I've got the endurance to be able to go 26.2 miles. But don't ask me to go further than that. But in life, we've got to be able to go further than 26.2 miles. We've got to go the whole distance. And that's a lot of miles. And who's going to give us that endurance to go through those times? But it is God. And that endurance produces character. And here again, having character, you know, that's having the character of, you know, as, as trouble comes, what is your attitude? What is your perspective? And that'll make all the difference. What's your character? That'll make all the difference in the world of how you handle it. One person, they, you know, you can have the same problem come to two people. One's got a bad attitude, and one's got good character. Well, who do you think is going to make out better? Obviously, the one that's got the character is going to be able to deal with this and handle it, handle it. whereas the person with the bad attitude, well, it's probably going to just crush them. And then hope. If you've got hope, then you've got a reason to go on. When people lose their hope in life, it's over. But if people have got just a glimmer of hope, 
that will give them the reason to continue to press on. And that's what Paul is saying, is that you know, God gives to you endurance, character, and hope. And when you've got those three things going in your life, you're going to be able to get through the storms of life. You're going to get through those times of suffering and how important that is. Years ago, I was living out in California, and I was a pastor out there, and I was visiting with this elderly couple. They were now in assisted living. Just the sweetest couple. They'd been married for, for many years. And they were just so kind, so gentle, so wise. And in many ways, I'd want to just say for this couple that had been married, and I can't remember, you know, well over 50 years. And I knew them in the late 80s, and, and I know since they have, you know, long since have died. But I just remember them. And I want to say, well, they probably have had just kind of a nice, easy life. But you know, as I was visiting with them, they shared with me that when they first got married, they were living in Iowa, and they purchased a farm. I mean, life looked like it was, it was, it was good. Getting married, they purchased a farm, and think that they're now going to live happily ever after. Well, it wasn't long after they got married and purchased their farm that the Great Depression hit. They lost their farm. They lost everything. He went to town and he heard a rumor. He heard a rumor that there was work out in California. Based on that rumor, they just packed up a suitcase full of their clothes and they got on a train and they headed out to California. And wouldn't you know, there was work out there, and he worked as a masonry worker, and he did that all of his life, and he was very successful at it. He did a good job providing for his wife and for his family. But his wife shared with me, saying that in that time, the Lord just placed on her heart the words of Psalm 46, and I'm going to read this. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore he will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the sea, into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break, at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. When the storms of life came upon this couple, it could have easily have, have collapsed their marriage, their house of life. But they put their faith and trust in God upon the rock as being the foundation for their lives. Putting their faith in God. When, I mean, can you imagine? Being young, getting married, buying a farm, and then losing it? At that point, it would have been so easy for them to have said, this isn't working out. You know, we got married, we had our plans, but you know what? So far, everything has been a huge obstacle. We have stepped into every hole along the way. Why don't we just split up, go our, sec our separate ways, and... And start over. But instead they trusted in the Lord that the Lord would guide them. And the Lord in those dark, devastating moments where you wonder, God, where are you? God was there and God led them to where this couple had a special marriage for many years. And did so many wonderful things to serve their God in their life.
and had a precious life. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on each other. When the storms of life come, they come and they test us and they make us stronger. You know, don't get me wrong, I'm one who likes the easy life. And if there's a storm on the horizon, I'll do everything that I can to try to avoid it. I mean, nobody likes a beautiful, warm summer's day than me. But yet, I also know that the reality is, is that storms come. Whether we, you know, no matter how much we may prepare to prevent storms from coming, they happen to the best of people. We get stuck in the storms whether we want to be them or not. Sometimes these storms, like I said, are literally, are literal storms, and other times they are figurative storms. But they do come. And we must remember that as we go through these storms, God is with us, and God is going to give us strength in these storms. This couple that I had mentioned out in California, yeah, married for many years, but they went through many storms in life. And every time they got, went through these storms, that God gave them strength. That is what toughens us in life. That's what strengthens us in life. And here again, that we have the endurance, the character, and the hope of God that gives us through, gets us through these times. And so I read a story from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were other, also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. And so this story, I mean, these are experienced fishermen, experienced people, sailors of the sea. And even, but even at that, as prepared as they were, that this storm caught them off guard. And they felt that they were perishing. But why didn't they perish? Because of the person who was in the boat with them. That was Jesus. Jesus calmed their storm. Now in life, as we pray and as we give our lives to the Lord, that oftentimes God will spare us from the storms. But other times he allows us to go through those storms of life because it is necessary that we do so. It's during those times that we are strengthened, that we know of God's presence, and we rely on God, and God is going to teach us things and strengthen us. We must remember that Jesus, who, who suffered and died on a cross, he was crucified, that in the love of God he was raised to a new life, and that is the power of the resurrection working in our lives to bring us to eternal life, but also working to help us daily in our lives, strengthening us. And so for those disciples, just when they felt like their ship was breaking up, that they had to realize is that the one in their boat does not sink, and that is Jesus Christ. And so that's the point that I want to make to you as couples that when you bond your life in our Lord Jesus Christ, when Jesus is in your marriage, when Jesus is in your home, being the foundation, when Jesus is in your boat in life, yes, those storms will come. But with Jesus in your boat, you will sail with those storms, and he will bring you peace and strength for your marriage and life. Well, thank you for joining me. Join me again next week as we continue our series on marriage. You've been watching To Know Christ with Rev. Jeff Peterson, pastor at the Lutheran Church of Peace in Platteville, Wisconsin. If you have comments about this program, you may contact Pastor Peterson via email at 2 no christ at hotmail.com.